What's up, everybody? My name is Itai, and I'm the Chess Geek from ChessGeek.org. I was thinking the other day what videos would be the most helpful for people looking to improve fast. Uh, you know, I've made opening videos, I've made countless trap videos, I've even made tip videos, but which videos would be the most useful for those kinds of people? And then it hit me, why not analyze chess gameplay and break down all the teachable moments, all the tips that people were using, the traps, the tricks that people had up their sleeves, so you can then learn them and implement them into your own gameplay. This will hopefully rapidly improve you and make you an all-round better chess player. So let's not waste any time and let's go. I will always leave the details of the people's games that I choose to use down below if you're interested in, you know, researching them. Anyways, the game here started with E4, and generally speaking, it doesn't really matter if you play E4 or D4 or any other opening, as long as you follow three basic rules. The first of which being controlling the center. You want to definitely control the center with your opening move, which E4 definitely does. I'll get to the other ones when, you know, they actually appear in the game. Anyways, the French defense was played here, uh, which is a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a green light for you to play d4. If your opponent allows for you to control the center, you always have to capitalize on their blunders. Um, not, I'm not saying that the French defense is a blunder because it is a very uh, stable, you know, uh, it's a very stable defense. But I am saying that you want to look um, at, at the weaknesses that your opponent is letting you, you know, take, take advantage of. And one of them is d4 with the move, well, with the move e6. Okay, you're, you're then faced with d5, um, and here is another teachable moment. Some people would play c3, um, here the move d2 was played, which is way better. The reason that d2 is better is because with the move d4, um, and with the fact that the e pawn is already pushed forward, you're not going to have to ever, well, you're not going to have the opportunity to defend this pawn with another pawn and form some pawn structure if you block off the c pawn. So if you play c3, well, now the c2 pawn is very sad it, and it can never use, uh, and it can never be placed on c3 and defend the d4 pawn. So if you play d4, usually you, you want to keep your c pawn um, not blocked, okay? So d4, I would recommend moving out this knight or moving this knight to d2. Uh, here the other knight was moved out, very common, and the bishop just putting more pressure on this and developing. The second rule in every opening is to develop your pieces. You've already seen control of the center has been very heavy, but already two pieces have been developed for white and only one for black. So you always wanna have that boost in development rather than just pushing out pawns. A lot of people make the mistake of just you know, putting out pawns, you know, in, in these weird structures. But the truth of the matter is, pawns are, are, are not uh, as important if they're not supported by minor or major pieces. Uh, here, the move c5 was played. I quite like this move when there's a d4 pawn. It just makes white pretty uncomfortable. Um, but because the knight was not blocking the c3 square, c3 was an option that was... Um, well, c3 is a move that could be played, and therefore it just defends this pawn. So you can see how important it is to always position your pieces in the right spot. Um, the, the third and final rule of any opening is to castle. And that's why you essentially want to develop your minor pieces. That's one reason, uh, to be able to get rid of these squares and then castle, because you want your king to be safe. That being said, you don't always want to rush into castling. A lot, uh, a lot of people just get out their pieces and then castle immediately. But sometimes there's threats. So you can see with the move, or with all these moves, there's always trades that are happening. So first you want to clear up everything, maybe attack a little bit. You don't want to attack too much, but attacking a little bit, especially counterattacking, is fine in the opening. Um, and then once everything seems to be going well for you, only then should you castle. So people that make the make the mistake a lot of a lot too often of castling too early, um, and you always want to castle, but not when there's threats that are happening. Now the knight was moved here, trying to get it to a more useful position, protecting the d4 square, as obviously the queen is putting pressure on it, uh, and and again the c3 pawn has obviously already been traded. Um, and here, the move a5 was played, and you always want to be thinking, well, what is my opponent thinking? And here with a5, it's a telltale sign that they want to play a4 and kick your knight away and, and, and get that, uh, that extra um, attack on this pawn that's only defended once. So with this move, you're always going to want to, or not always, but usually you're going to want to play a4 and stop this pawn from going forward. Here's an example of why you want to castle early and get your king safe. When your king is on e1, there's a lot more attacks that can happen to it than when it is on g1. So, 
You always want to castle early. Sometimes it's not possible because there's just a lot of attacks that your opponent is doing. Um, but otherwise, I would definitely make sure to castle um, after you developed your pieces. And now you need to think. Usually you never want to move your king to anywhere because you never want to lose the ability to, ca to castle um, and get your king safe. But here, f1 is actually the best move. Why? Because you need to notice that all of these pieces that you have are overworked. They're all defending uh, some pieces, and so none of them are able to stop this attack. For example, let's say the bishop tries to stop it. Well, now the the obviously the bishop can capture, and it doesn't matter what you do. If you capture with the queen, you're hanging the knight. If you capture with this knight, you're hanging. Well, you're hanging this pawn because after capture, capture, the queen can capture the knight, so you're losing a pawn. And same with the the other knight. So overall, you're going to lose pieces because once again, all your knights are doing something, um, and that's why you want to make sure. Uh, at least you want to usually have more defenders than than attackers. At the bare minimum, you need the same amount of uh, you need the same amount of defenders as attackers. But usually, you want more defenders than attackers. So things like this cannot happen, which will take away one of your defender, leaving a piece well, leaving a piece uh, undefended. Okay, so the king was forced to move to f1, but it definitely isn't the end of the game. You can still um, you know, form attacks and definitely win the game, even if the king is here. In fact, the king moving to f1 allows you to start using your rook here because the rook is never going to come to the center files because there's going to be a king in the way. So that's when you want to start thinking about what pieces do I want to use and how do I want to use them, right? If I can still castle, you don't necessarily want to start breaking up your pawn structure. But because I can't castle, maybe I want to start being able to use my rook. And same on this side, I'm not going to castle here, so I can start playing these moves. I can, you know, get my, my pieces on the queen side involved into the game, okay? But if you know you're going to castle somewhere, or at least you plan to castle somewhere, you definitely don't want to break up the structure there. Now, I've just been uh, zooming through some of the moves, but they're all very intuitive moves. Generally, in the middle game, all you need to do is not blunder. You want to form attacks like this is a good move, just form more attacks, um, and don't blunder pieces. Just make sure every single piece is defended. This bishop defended by the pawn. This knight by by the queen. Uh, this rook by this rook. This rook by the other rook. Uh, you know, so make sure that obviously the queen and the bishop. So make sure your pieces are defended. And if they are defended, usually you will not run into any problems. A big mistake is starting to attack when you have pieces that are undefended. So if you had pieces that were not defended and you started making all these attacks, well, it's way easier to counterattack. And then your attacks are much more pointless. So attacks are only strong if your your position is strong. So make sure that you have all your pieces uh, defended, um, and and then you just you cost yourself a lot less blunders. The most most amount of blunders happen because you don't have uh, pieces that are defended. Now these were a couple of moves that I would I do want to uh, you know help you understand. So first off, you threaten to attack the, the 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 rook. Beautiful move. The rook moves here, and now I don't know if this player actually planned it, but you always want to have a plan. So what you can see is that this rook, uh, which notice hasn't moved because you never castled. Um, so this rook, you want to be attacking the king here, okay? And the bishop is currently in the way. So maybe you want to, sac or not sacrifice, but trade here, uh, let the queen capture, and then you can start forming attacks, right? So this move is beautiful. The idea is if the king captures, uh, well, obviously that runs into a very quick mate, um, and, and that's just not going to end well, right? You have these rooks, and you have the queen that's just going to mate very quickly. So instead, the king plays this move, but that doesn't help him either, because again, this is just mate. Um, and again, even if the, the king captures, it's mate. The, the, and the black decided to resign here, but it wouldn't have worked even if, if the king captured the rook. Okay, so what you want to be thinking when you're attacking is my, my game plan. Okay, what pieces do I have to my ability? Okay, and so already at this position, you should say, my rook has an open file, it can attack. My queen has this beautiful square defended by a knight that it can attack, and I can always bring another rook. So all I need is the ability to do that, and so what I need to do is obviously take away, whoops, take away this knight that's obviously right now defending the square, because otherwise the queen would never be able to, to go there. So that's why you want to play this move get the rook away, and then take away the knight. So that's realistically how you want to be forming attacks. Figure out what pieces can I use, what pieces are, are stopping me from using it, like the knight, and then how can I get rid of the knights, uh, or, or the piece that's stopping you from using it, and then you can form attacks. Okay. 
Thank you guys for watching. As this is a new series, I ask that you leave any suggestions for how I can improve it down below and generally what you think of the idea and how helpful you think it is. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this video as it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and check out my brand new website at www.chessgeek.org. Thank you for watching. Peace out.